Other aspects basically have to do with the current state of security in the country and the sub-region. Of course, the armed forces and the security agencies have done so much in the last couple of months. But let, let me say clearly, in the last six months, they've been able to record a lot of successes. Now, the, the issue here is that it's not very easy for the wider society to appreciate the successes being recorded by the armed forces because there will definitely be incidents of uh, misadventure. This is a symmetric conflict. It's not like the normal conventional war in which territories are won, you grapple with the enemy, you defeat him and you move on. Here we have the enemy embedded in society coming from all parts. And like I once said, someone had remarked after the Brighton bombing of 1984 that the difference between the, the, the terrorist or the criminal and the state is that it only takes one act for the terrorist to succeed and gain a lot of um, publicity. But for the armed forces, for the government and its agencies, you have to succeed on every occasion. Otherwise, after 12 successes, if you fail or you have a problem on the 13th occasion, nobody wants to know. So this is the, the, the situation with which we are faced. But nevertheless, I'll just highlight uh, that the chief of defense staff, service chiefs and the intelligence heads briefed council. And I can tell you that for the land forces, they've recorded a lot of successes in the last two months. We've had a steady increase in the number of uh, returnees, both uh, combatants and non-combatants from the theater of operation, both from the uh, Islamic State West Africa province and the Boko Haram enclaves. Now what has happened is we are now uh, having to contend with 15,852 returnees. This in its own case is uh, accompanied by problems, humanitarian problems, problems of logistics, problems of profiling each and every one because we are not just interested in profiling the, 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 the ex-combatants, we are also interested in profiling those people who are assumed to be non-combatants who may have reached out and assisted the terrorists in one way or the other. Now, the, the, the fact again is that the armed forces, the land forces have done an excellent job because in the span of one month, we've been <clears throat> able to take out the leadership of the Islamic State West Africa province that is... Um, Abu Musab al-Barnawi. Al Two days ago, the man who succeeded him, Juan Malambako, who is also the, uh, one of the prominent uh, leaders of the Shura Council of the Islamic State West Africa province, was also taken out, which means basically Shekau is out, Abu al-Barnawi uh, uh, al is out, now Malam Bako is out. They're also contending with leadership. And you know, these things are also accompanied by a lot of inherent uh, issues of trust, conflict, uh, mutual suspicion, and other things. So the operations being conducted by the armed forces in the northern part of the country, that is operations um, Thunderstrike, Operation uh, Hadarindaji, Operation Gamma Aiki, Operation Duke and Guduma, all these, if you aggregate these operations, they put a lot of pressure on the leadership of the, of the Islamic State West Africa province, Boko Haram, and also the tangential group known as Islamic State in the Greater Sahara. Now the successes of the land forces have also been uh, reinforced by the activities of uh, the, the Air Force. The Air Force has carried out a lot of interdiction missions and so far the number of missions they've carried out have yielded a lot of uh, successes, especially in supporting other operations like the operations in the North Central Operation Safe Haven 
in uh, the plateau, then Operation World Stroke in, Pla in, in Benue, Taraba, and Nasarawa states, while at the same time they've also supported operations uh, in the southeast, Operation Golden Dawn, and in the south-south, Operation Delta Save. And uh, for the Nigerian Navy, it has not experienced the type of success it has experienced in the last six months. I can tell you on authority that the Nigerian Navy, uh, under the leadership of the Chief of the Naval Staff, has recorded so much success in the maritime domain. What it has done in the last six months is to deploy its uh, maritime domain awareness capabilities or assets to deal with the situation in, in, in the maritime domain, that is using the falcon eye and using the regional maritime awareness capability. What this has resulted in is that in the last quarter, the, the third quarter of this year, there has not been a single incident of piracy or sea robbery in our entire maritime domain. This has been acknowledged, not just by our own um, governmental services, but by the International uh, Maritime Bureau. On the 14th of July, they sent out a dispatch in which it, uh, the dispatch stated that in the last 27 years, the entire international community, the maritime community, has not experienced the type of success that has been recorded by the Nigerian Navy. And this was also endorsed by the Defense Web on the, on the 16th of October in another dispatch. So you can see, and again, to buttress my, my point, the Nigerian Navy has also been able to re-establish the presence of uh, the military in the Lake Chad area, which has been abandoned for a long time. Not only have they re-established the presence of our military elements, but they've also reactivated the fisheries, College of Fisheries in, in Baga. So you can see that the Army, Navy, Air Force, the entire armed forces have been doing a very tremendous uh, job and being supported by the intelligence services. Only two days ago, um, the DSS was able to apprehend and take in um, the successor of the notorious gangster in Benue State known as Ghana. So his own successor, uh, Bet uh, whose, whose name is uh, Chekere Kefas Aundofa, has been arrested. His other name is um, Azonto. And as soon as he was apprehended by the DSS, his own successor was ad arrested also about 16 hours ago. So you can see that despite all the challenges we're having, the armed forces and the intelligence agencies have been able to find a way to work in synergy, to link together, work harmoniously to ensure that there's, uh, the, we have greater success in the theater of operation. Of course, President Buhari, in as much as he's satisfied with the actions of our defense and security forces, has also urged them not to relent. You know, of course, as a retired general, he knows that in operations there will always be lulls. Sometimes victory begets, you know, other issues like complacency, lethargy, and other things, but he has stated clearly that we must bring this thing to an end, working, of course, in partnership with our regional uh, colleagues. The new theater of war seems to be in Nigeria Rail Services. We have seen an attack yesterday. What effort are you going to make to ensure that the asset has been set? Well, efforts right now are underway. Uh, as you already know yesterday the president had a, an important visitor the president of turkey just like he's had discussions with the president of turkey he's had pre discussions with other leaders on how we can share intelligence and acquire technical capabilities to deal with these uh, emerging threats so it is 
basically a matter of looking at where we can get uh, equipment and uh, assets to deal with these uh, threats. It's okay, it's okay, sir. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.